Hi. Hi. I'm David McCreef. I work at Mule Design. I have a podcast called It Might Get Personal. And it's a musical podcast. How many people have seen it? Sweet. <laughs> it's hard to get a sense of, of how many people actually watch your stuff. Even though there's analytics and things, it's hard to get a sense of that. So, for those who haven't seen it, it's a video podcast. A guest comes on the show and sings a song that means something special to them, and then we talk about it for a little bit. Generally, I try to get people who have little or no experience singing because part of the point of the podcast, there's, there's, there's a few things that happen with the podcast. But, so let me back up and tell you how the podcast came to be. Uh, I am a musician. This is my guitar. One day, I decided to install this pickup in my guitar, which involved hand drilling a hole in the bottom of my guitar. And that's something that you do very, very slowly because you don't want to mess up your guitar. So, while I was doing this, I turned on Netflix and I watched this movie called It Might Get Loud. It's a movie about Jimmy Page, The Edge from U2, and uh, Jack White. And I thought, oh, this will be interesting. I'll get some insight into these guitar players that people think are really great. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm mixed on Led Zeppelin, I'm mixed on U2. Um, Jack White is an interesting guy, but they're all good guitarists, so I thought, okay, maybe I'll learn something. It turned out to just be these three guys talking about how cool they were. <laughs> and, and walking around their palatial recording studios that are in their backyard, like, like the Edge was showing off his recording studio in his backyard, and it's literally the size of this building. Um, and so I was talking with a friend of mine on Twitter about it, and I said it would have been better if it had been called It Might Get Personal. And we actually talked to the guys about stuff. Um, and then I thought, hey, that would be a good podcast. So around the same time that this happened, Mule started, Mule Design, where I work, um, decided that we should try to start a podcast network. We had no idea what we were doing. But every, it, was like, it was like that scene in the, in the old movies where it was like, let's put on a show, right? We built a barn and then we put on a show in it and everybody at the, at the studio was lining up. I have a podcast, I have a podcast, I have a podcast. And, and I thought, well, I'm gonna do something different. I'll do video. I have no idea how to do video. So I had to learn how to do video. I had no idea how I was gonna record it, so I had to learn how to record it. Um, but ultimately, what it came down to is that I wanted to create a vehicle and a space for people to come sing songs. When I grew up, I had the good fortune of being in a musical family, and my parents were um, white liberal Democrats in the Midwest, so we listened to a lot of Pete Seeger and Peter, Paul, and Mary, and that kind of stuff. And Pete Seeger, of all of the musicians that I have become aware of in my life, probably made the biggest impact on me because I got it at that young age. And if you've ever seen Pete Seeger sing or seen Pete Seeger work in audience, it is amazing. It's inspiring. His whole purpose, his whole reason for being is to get other people singing. That's all he's there for. Um, plus, he's a total badass. He tanked his own career during the McCarthy communist stuff um, because he refused to play along. For a long time, he and his wife, Toshi, um, lived hand to mouth and by the grace of their friends. And even now, it's not like he's rich, but he's still, he's, he's in his late 80s and he still, still sits down every day, answers mail from people, he still sends songbooks out. Um, in the 50s, he wrote one of the first how to play the banjo books for people who had, who had never even heard of the banjo. Um, so when I started this, I sort of had him in mind, and I also had in mind my first experience with music, which was American punk rock in the late 80s, um, it, mid 80s. It happened just as, I was, just as I was graduating from high school. 
American punk rock sort of came into ascendancy over the British stuff, and it was that was also amazing. It was it was a community of people getting together and saying to the to the music industry and doing doing our own thing. I spent an entire summer playing to crowds smaller than this in a warehouse because that's all the people that would come to see our band. But it was so great, and they loved it, and we loved them. So all of this is going through my head as I'm thinking about what kind of podcasts I want to make. So it's, it's, it's about these three things. It's about music that you love and that means something special to you. It's about the personal connection that you can make with music, just not, not just for yourself, but with other people. Um, and it's about getting past this hurdle and this idea that you can't sing. Everybody can sing. Everybody in this room can sing. Everybody in this room could come on my podcast and sing a song. I guarantee it. And I'll play guitar for you. Um, let's look at one real quick. So this is, this is Henry Montero. He is the son of one of the co-founders of Mule Design. And I've known Henry since he was born. I love the kid. And he has, been, he has been coming into his own musically over the last three or four years, probably. And he decided he wanted to come on. And he came and did an M. Ward song. But he cares deeply about music. Doctor, I said, Doctor, please, what would you do if your true love leaves? Said the hardest thing in the world to do is to find somebody believes in you. Make a sad, make a sad, make a sad song. Make a sad, make a sad, make a Sad, sad song I went to the whippoorwill I said, whippoorwill, please What would you do if your true love leaves? He said, I only have but one trick up my sleeve I'll sing it over and over Till she comes back to me Make a sad, make a sad Make a sad song Make a sad, make a sad Make a sad, sad song So I went to the well, I said, kill the well, please. What would you do if your true love leaves? He said, I only have but one trick up my sleeve. I'll sing it over and over till she comes back to me. I make a sad, make a sad, make a sad song. Make a sad, make a sad, make a sad. So the great thing about Henry is that I'm not sure that he understands the idea of not being brave about singing. He just walked in, sat down, 
That was May. I think that was the second take. He did one more. He had, you know, you make you make one bad pancake, right? Um, but then, but then he, he this one was the second one, and he nailed it. He did one more just to make sure that we that we'd gotten something to, that we could use. And then he got up and left. I mean, we talked for a few minutes at the end of the show. Um, but he 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 brought this song in. He he talked about it. It was it, and it, for him, it was a very personal thing. It was about it was about his relationship with his mother, and this song, um, for him, is is a very deep connection with his mom, and that was so great. Um, so, when I started trying to get people to come on the show, I I realized, oh, that's right, people are scared to do this, and I've I've talked through through it with several guests. There, there are 24 episodes up there. Um, many of them specifically address, well, I wanted to do this because I was scared to. And, and so that's, that's the thing for me is that, is that bravery is not a lack of fear. Bravery is doing something in spite of the fear. And you get up there and you push through that barrier and then you know you can do it. And Henry's got a band now, he's sung on he sang on a recording for uh, one of the bands that I've been in, um, and and he's he's doing great. And he's in a musical now. Is that right? Cabaret. Henry is in cabaret this weekend. He plays a Nazi. He, <laughs> <laughs> he plays a Nazi, just to make sure that it gets on the video. <laughs> so. Um, so as, as I was trying to recruit guests, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing. Nobody, I, I shouldn't say nobody, I've had three or four people out of the 24 volunteer and come to me and say, I want to be on your show, I want to be on your show. Um, but I'm frequently scrambling around trying to find people to come on the show and I have to do a little cajoling and that's fine, I get it, it's scary. I know one guy who is a, who is a working part-time musician, he has a day job, but he's also a working part-time musician, performs regularly uh, by himself playing an acoustic guitar and singing in front of people. He will not come on the show because of that lens. He's terrified of the lens, um, terrified of being on camera, which is interesting because I've had people say, well, why, why does it have to be a video podcast? Why don't you just do audio? Because the video is expensive, it's a pain in the ass, I have to edit it. Um, but watching the people sing is a big part of it. It's not just listening. Listening to music in your headphones is good, but it's not the same as actually watching someone sing and watching their face and seeing what they're thinking about. Um, so while I'm, while I'm in the middle of trying to recruit, um, so, uh, uh, an acquaintance of mine said, uh, I was trying to get some people to come down to the studio and, and he said, can we heckle? And <laughs> And, I, and I, I, I forget exactly what I replied back with. I knew he was kidding. Um, and I made a joke back to him. But this was, this was the tweet that, that suddenly like gelled it for me. I hadn't, I hadn't put it in these words before. But it's a chance to be brave and have fun. So that's the motto of the show. Be brave, have fun. It's a good motto for your life. <laughs> The more things you're willing to do, the more times you're willing to face down that, that fear, however irrational it is, however rational it is. It, it's, perfectly, it's perfectly reasonable to be scared of going on camera and singing a song that's going to be broadcast for the internet to look at. What a judgmental bunch of pricks, right? It's the internet. Oh my God. But it doesn't matter because you've done it and the people that you love are gonna watch that and they're going to be so excited and so happy to see you sing. Um, so part of the goal of the show, this is, this is like a huge goal, right? This is, not some, this is like a Pete Seeger level goal. I'm not Pete Seeger, God bless him. Um, is getting people to sing to each other. I sing. I am, I am a singer in a band. I've been a singer my whole life. I don't sing to my wife as often as I should. This is my wife, who, who puts up with me coming, in every, coming into town every month for an entire Sunday and recording these things. And she also drove me in today because, yeah. So I've got a crap load of these buttons. 
anybody wants one, come see me after, after we're done here. And we're going to do some singing now. We're going to have somebody sing. Where's Benjamin? <laughs> Sorry to talk about Pete Seeger. The other guy is Joe Strummer. Whenever I have a question for myself about anything, whether I'm at work, whether I'm on stage, whether I'm dealing with something in life, I ask myself what one of these two guys would do. Neither of them, uh, Joe Strummer is dead. He was the singer for The Clash, if you don't know that. Um, neither of them were by any means perfect people. Joe Strummer, Joe Strummer was a fuck up in so many ways. Um, Pete Seeger, you know, like I said, tanked his own career for principle and has dragged his wife along with him. She stood with him. Um, but they were good people and they, they cared deeply about other people. And that's, that's the point is, and, and they did that through music. Um, Joe's, Joe's later career after the clash and after his years in the wilderness um, was, all about, was all about helping young musicians come up and his wife um, and family set up a foundation in his name after he died that currently is helping bands um, mostly in England but around the world. They just finished building a studio in um, can't remember. They finished building a studio in Africa where there are no studios and um, they are funding it with donations to help other people make music. Yeah. Um, so, Benjamin, let's cheer people up, please. So, this is Ben. He also works at Mule, as previously noted. He is an experienced performer. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's a princess in a play, in a musical, and he's going to sing us a song. So this is the cup song, if you've ever seen Pitch Perfect. Um, it was performed by Anna Kendrick, written by A.P. Carter. And I seriously just learned this last night, so <laughs> things are probably still over. <laughs> next? No? All right. Hey, Jim, can you help me with the table? Thank you. Uh, all right. 
John. Yeah. Yeah, please do. What right, you gonna do? A, it's an original. Is that okay? Oh, sweet, totally. You want? Yeah, can I stool? Yeah. yeah cool. All right. This is John Slingerland. He also works at Mule. <laughs> we are a talented bunch of people. Do you need a pick? Okay. John's a finger picker. He's been on the show before. He did a cover of Oh, right. When doves cry. Of When Doves Cry. This is one important part of the show: is that it's covers. When you come on the song, when you come on the show, you sing a song by somebody else that means something to you. John is a musician and writes songs. So he's going he's going to play something that he wrote for us. So I don't know if I can project uh, in this setting. I'll try. Uh, this is an original song. It's about dating uh, from the perspective of the food. <laughs> Vegetables that would make our dinner very, very delectable. If I were spaghetti, would you be my spicy garlic tomato sauce on a moonlit night? We could be dinner for two. Nothing makes my taste buds tingle like the thought of you. Oh, we could be. Dinner for two and Nothing makes my taste buds tingle like the thought of you Then after dinner we'll make our way down south Onto the stomach once we've passed the mouth <laughs> Hope I sit well with you Hope there's room for dessert If you don't like sweets I can make you convert Hope there's no indigestion I can be hard to take There's only so much you reveal on one date Hope I sit well with you Then, sorry When you feel your tummy think of me and smile When you feel your tummy rumble think of me and smile we could be dinner for two oh. We could be dinner for two Nothing makes my taste buds tingle like the thought of you oh, We could be dinner for two Nothing makes my taste buds tingle like the thought of you Anybody else? No? You want to do one together? Lena, you want to try it? You want to try it? Yeah. I don't know what it's, I, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's going to sound like. Hang on a second, let me do one thing. So, uh, if you saw the most recent episode, hang on one second. If you saw the most recent episode of It Might Get Personal, you saw this young woman on the stage now, uh, Lena, sing Fat Bottom Girls by Queen. <laughs> and it's really, really good. They're all really good. I love all of them. Ha <laughs> ha. 
inside your red firelight. Oh, you gotta put it all, hang out, fat bottom girls, you make the rockin' world go round. That was good. Thanks for singing along. That makes everything better. Steven? <laughs> Nobody has to do anything they don't want to. <laughs> what time are we looking at? It's about 10. So um, we'll do one last song. We'll do This Land Is Your Land. Right? I gotta retune again. This land is your, your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Islands. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. As I was walking that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway I saw below me that golden valley this land was made for you and me here comes the chorus this land is your land this land is my land from California to the New York Island from the Redwood Forest 
the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. I've, I've roamed and rambled and followed my footsteps from the sparkling water to the sparkling deserts. This land was made for you and me. One more chorus and we'll hang it up. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. This land was made for you and me. Thank you, everybody. Okay, 